Pinewood Studios, a British film studio located in the town of Buckinghamshire, northwest London. Founded in the 1930s by millionaire Arthur Rank, the studio was created to encourage the rise of British films in the industry, often referred to as the British Hollywood. The British film studio is well known for the home of the James Bond and Carry On film franchises, however also provides production for American Hollywood as well. Over the course of this documentary, I'll be looking at the rise of the studio's production over the past 80 years, going decade by decade, starting with the first film created at Pinewood, Talk of the Devil in 1939, was directed by Carl Reed, and it remains one of his most obscure films. He's seen here by collecting his Oscar in 1968. The film consisted of a ruthless businessman trying to steal his brother's successful shipping company. However, there's not much footage of the 82-year-old film, so we move on to the... One of the most notorious films shot at Pinewood Black Narcissus was directed by Michael Powell, with the film being very well known for using large-scale landscape paintings called matte paintings. These were paintings used for backgrounds of film sets, used specifically in this film to make it appear as if the film was set in Nepal on the Himalayas, however it was filmed in West Sussex. Matte paintings were seen as the stepping stones used for today's technology such as green screens. Whilst Pinewood still use matte paintings nowadays, they are much rarer as productions now typically shoot on location, which adds to the realism of today's film production. <laughs> During the end of the 1950s, 1959 to be more specific, Tiger Bay, a crime drama directed by Lee Thompson, was released. Unlike the past two films mentioned, this film was mostly shot on location at Cardiff and Newport in South Wales, however, was still supported by the London-based studio. It marks a vital transitional movement in the move towards British New Wave. The British New Wave form of cinema was characterised by many of the same stylistic and thematic conventions as the French New Wave, such as shooting on location as well as having real people rather than extras. This was seen as an opportunity to highlight realism projected in Pinewood Studios. One example of this is highlighting the reality of the working class of the north of England. This was then used as inspiration for the realistic street-inspired Tiger Bay. One of the most popular films that Pinewood Studios has ever made was the release of the 1960s film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, directed by Ken Hughes. This was one of the first films made by Pinewood that involved a soundtrack, presented mostly songs with very few instrumental tracks. The soundtrack was so popular, in fact, that since its original release, has been re-released on CDs another four times, in 1997, 2004, 2011 and 2013. The song Chitty Chitty Bang Bang was nominated for an Academy Award, leading to the reoccurrence of soundtracks for future movies and not just at Pinewood. <laughs> The 1970s brought a new look on cinema basing films on superhero comics with the first one being Superman partially shot at Pinewood. This film had the highest budget for one film at the time being 55 million with even bigger earnings of 300 million. Superman contained large scale visual effect sequences for landings and takeoff. For this, wired flying riggings were devised and used. On location, these were suspended from tower cranes whereas in studio, elaborate rigs were suspended from the studio ceiling. A mix of matte painting blue screens and real life locations allowed for a variety of different effects to make Superman look like he was taking off, landing or just enhancing the richness of colour on Superman's suit. The popularity of the variety of effects set the stones for more enhanced visual effects in future cinema. <laughs> Both the 1980s and 1990s followed in similar footsteps as the 1970s, constantly using new visual effects as well as superhero movies being the highest grossing movies at that time, such as Batman, Superman 2 and Superman 3, all being shot partially at Pinewood Studios. <laughs> The start of the century meant the start of new visual effects for Pinewood, and the rise of CGI was at the heart of that. Even though CGI was originally developed years before, new techniques to make CGI look more realistic as well as cheaper costs were beginning to occur. Around about the same time as this, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, shot at Royal Dolls from a village of Buckinghamshire at none other than Pinewood, began shooting. However, rather than rely on CGI, the director Burton wanted the 40 squirrels to be real, and so he trained 40 squirrels in one in advance of shooting as any normal person would. However, the scene was still supplemented by CGI in the end. Still though, I think next time Burton should stick to a nice cute dog. <laughs> The past decade on production at Pinewood was one of the most successful, if not the most successful decade they've had as a studio, providing production for all the Star Wars sequels, up to your own judgement whether you view those as successful, many of the Marvel movies, Paddington and both Kingsman films, clearly outlining the rise that British production has had on the film industry as a whole over the past 80 years and I'm sure well into the future.